Hello, Anime Nyan here. And today we're doing another sponsored tutorial uh, by Your Lord Adam. Uh, today on how to import Dead by Daylight characters into Blender and Unreal Engine. Also, I would like to give a big thank you to Gyro, who uh, very compassionately uh, sponsored this tutorial for 100 USD. So he has made this tutorial possible. Uh, please see his Pixiv in the description below. And also, please join the two discords the NSFW Blender and DVD rendering uh, discords in the description below. Uh, so thank you so much. Enjoy. All right. In this video, I'll be going over to import Dead by Daylight characters to Blender and then from Blender to Unreal Engine 4. But first, I'd like to thank Gyro for sponsoring the creation of this video. Okay, so first, you're going to need to join the Dead by Daylight rendering discord and download a modified version of Umodel. Link will be in the description. Once downloaded, place both files uh, in the folder, in, well, in a folder. I just called it umodel on my desktop, then run umodel.exe. You'll get this message. You can just click don't ask before opening this file and hit run. This menu will open. Choose an override game detection, set to Unreal Engine 4, Unreal Engine 4.27. Then it's pointing path to game files is here. This is wrong. So click the three dots. Folder will come up. Navigate to where your game is installed. For me, it is in D, Steam, Library, Steam Apps Common. Yours will be, probably be slightly different than this. Then, Dead by Daylight, Dead by Daylight, Content, Packs. You click Select Folder. Now, click OK. You'll see it read all the files. And you'll be given this menu. From here, what you want to do is find, your fi find what you're going to export. Uh, so, close these two, go to Game. I'm going to export Steve. So characters, campers, and you'll notice some of the names make sense, like Fang or Dwight. Some characters, however, are using an ID, such as Maui here. This would be Jane, and this would be Ash. Steve is here. Nancy has a corresponding name of an F. The demographic is the same way, but without a letter at the end. So I'm going to go to Steve. I'm going to export his head. If you just right-click it, you can export, or you can double-click it to preview it. Another secret for this is if you click M, you'll see the character's you know, texture is gone, but you can also see the name of the material, so eyelashes and head. Clicking these, you can then see just the material. Click M again, and you can see the spec values and texture values. You can click the names of the textures to see the textures themselves. This is helpful for finding values such as specular or other values that aren't apparently obvious. We're going to go back, and I'm going to export... I think it's number eight, that shirt. Export it. Now we're gonna go to legs and number six. Now to export his hair, we need to open up the heads folder, ACC models. Then number six, because I just like the glasses better. Export. Now, the same thing can be done with legs and torsos, the ACC folders. You'll see the numbers line up with the scarf, which is part of the Scoops of Wing outfit, and the backpack, things like that. I think the legs for number six do have the map. No, that'd be number eight. So we're done there. Now, once the stuff is all exported, we can close U model, but I'm not going to. I'm simply going to minimize it and open Blender. I'll be using 3.6 for this tutorial. Feel free to use any version, but if things are broken other versions, that would be why. I'm going to select all and delete. And then I'm going to edit, preferences, add-ons, install. Now on my desktop, I have a folder, Blender plugins. A link to this plugin will be in the description. It is mandatory. Once you click it, hit install. Go to the show here, tag it to import, or to enable me. Close that, and now if we click in by default, you'll see a new tab here, PSK slash PSA importer. You need to use specific settings for this, so you want to enable scale down. Uh, that should be all you have to enable, yeah. Now import PSK, I'm going to return to my desktop, U model. You model export game characters, campers, and 
just keep going through all the stuff you exported. As they're exported or imported, you'll see them here. Just keep importing everything. Alright, the whole character is now imported. There's one thing I did forget that you should always do in the character's models folder before you've opened to anything else. There's skeleton here. This is the full skeleton and you're going to need it later, or immediately. Okay, there's one more plugin you're going to need to install. So once again, edit, preferences, add-ons, install, and then fuse skeletons. This is insanely helpful because well, you might notice with the it imported multiple skeletons, one for each model. So once it's enabled, just select each one, or sorry, uh, import your base skeleton. Now, you'll notice it is named 004. That will be whichever order you import it. The first one will always be no number, and then one, two, three onwards. So select all of the skeletons you previously imported, and then the main skeleton. It needs to be selected to last. You'll have a new tab here again, Fuse Skeletons, click it, and Fuse. Now there are all the models merged under the same skeleton, and much easier to work with. There is going to be a model in here with the same title as what you export from you model. It's blank, just delete it. Okay, from here we can hide the skeleton and begin texturing the character. Now, the materials I'm going to be setting up here are super basic and are really just to get it to look like the game. And I highly recommend you make your own materials so that you look better. This is just a general guideline. So if we go here in the bottom of the corner of the screen, you can view, or you see the icon changes, click and drag it out. And in the top left, you'll see this button here. Click it, go to Shader Editor. You'll notice this tab here. Now I'm going to select the material I'll be editing, which is... Zero, zero, uh, torso zero, zero, 008, click Use Nodes, I'm going to hit N to close that menu, and now you can begin importing textures. I'm going to reopen the UModel export uh, folder, go to the characters, all that, but textures, and zero, zero, 008. Now we'll have, you can see the jacket and the accessory, we're in 8. Because I use different parts and different outfits, it's going to be in different texture folders. So this is torso, which the material is called torso, however it is using jacket 008. This is occasionally things that behavior does, you just gotta adapt to it. Another thing they can be used to get around that is once again, in here, oh, that's a bug. Uh, it was jacket 008, hit M. And we can see it's torso 008. It highlights when we mouse over, click it, and we can see it says jacket. And the spec value is 0.5. For Blender, I'd recommend ignoring this value and using what looks best to you, because Unreal Engine 4 and Blender use different systems for Specular. The result will not be one to one. But from here, just plug color into base color, and then type in mix, and you have mix color. Place it in between, set it to multiply, and a factor of 1. If I scroll over here, I can set to actually load the textures. You'll notice changing the factor here darkens the model. That is intentional. Then your ORM texture, or ORM, stands for Ambient Inclusion Roughness Metallic. When you import it, set its color space to non-color. Then plug its color into B. Now, you're going to want to add another node. Uh, you might have seen me type that. I hit space the search up but you can also click add and then search and I'm going to type in a separate color and place it in between you want red to plug into B and you'll notice the model might look a little bit better certain spots get darkened due to ambient occlusion and then because it's roughness metallic that means green goes into roughness and blue into metallic now Using 0.5 specular as a default, and you might notice it looks really white. Once again, that's just due to the difference in specular. I prefer 0.2 usually. Now from here, we're going to import the normal map. Like all normal maps, set it to non-color. Plug it into normal, and then bring in a normal map node. Plug it in. 
Now there is one slight catch. You might notice these details look like they're bumped inwards instead of outwards. That's due to the difference between Blender and Unreal once again. The texture's green channel is effectively inverted. So what you're going to do is bring in a RG RGB curves node, place it in between, set it to G, and invert it. So the one in the top right needs to go to the left, and one on the bottom left needs to go to the right. You can now see it looks correct. Now we can just simply copy paste this onto each of them and then go and change the textures. Now one slight difference here, this is where I mix materials and sometimes even when you don't mix models it'll do this. So it's 008 for the accessory and torso, but this is his base body torso, so just his skin. So it says 00. So here, when you open it, it's not here. We need to go back a folder and the 00 folder. You'll see that's where the head, hair, and torso is. So once again, they load all the exact same. It's just that's, you know, one small difference. Okay, here's one more hiccup. Now, the lashes. These are just the general eyelashes, as you can see on the character. Basically, all survivors use the same eyelashes uh, material, and it's super basic. So, basically, you don't really even need a special setup or anything. I prefer to set the spec order to zero, the roughness to one, and then I'm going to actually show this folder setup. Campers, texture, or no, sorry, campers, common accessories, textures, top, and then you'll see there's some common textures here. These are used by a bunch of different characters in the game, but lashes 01 underscore M. The underscore M abbreviation is the alpha texture. It's what makes certain parts transparent. So we're going to import it, and then we're going to connect its color output into alpha, and then we're going to set its color space to non-color. You'll notice now the eyelashes are started to appear, and under we can close the surface here under settings, blend mode, to usually alpha clip looks good for eyelashes to make it sharper, but hashed is a bit more like fuzzy on the edges. It's hard to see with this small model though. I will use alpha clip. If you ever use alpha clip for dividing up models, the clip threshold should be set to 0 0.333333. 333. Hit enter. Now you'll notice they're white, so just go to base color, and we can just set it to black. He has eyelashes now. That is how most characters' eyelashes are set up. I would, again, strongly recommend your own materials, possibly even own models if you really want your renders to look that much better. Now, another thing is the hair. It uses a different material setup. The accessory here is just his glasses, so it's the same as I was previously doing. So we just come in 6, normal map. And all that's the same. Remember, normal map, uh, underscore M, underscore N, underscore ORM, all always non-color. Don't forget it as it can mess up the appearance of the character. Such as here. You can see the glasses are a bit, they look wet because of the ORM texture being sRGB. Set to non-color, and it's fixed. Alright, the hair material. So for this, how you set the hair up is completely up to you. Again, custom materials are best. This isn't the objective best way to do it. I just think it looks good with the result. So what we're going to do first is it's really helpful and borderline on mandatory is to go to heads, accessory, models, find your model. I got you six, yes. Hit M to bring this up, click the material, and then all these settings. There's a bunch to go over here, and, you know, you need 
some of this can just be forgotten about. It's basically just stuff I don't know how it works. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate a material that looks good. Again, custom materials. Not I I can't reiterate enough. The more time and effort you put into your materials, the better the result. Alright, so first we want another mixed color node. We want to set it to multiply and plug it into base color. And then from there, we're going to take uh, a color ramp, plug it into. So for the hair material, I, uh, I'm going to be going over how I set it up my way. There's some tricks you should employ here that will help you make uh, find these values. So in you model, if you go open up your model, hit M, click the hair material, and then if there's something here, hit M again. And you can tell the values. Uh, once again, roughness and speckler. Speckler works different in Blender, so uh, I wouldn't listen to it, especially since, you know, behavior sometimes just says speckler zero, which I think looks bad. If you come in here, we'll turn the speckler off, and it's really flat. So I'm going to set mine to point 0.1 just for now. Now from here, you want your multiply node, your color ramp node, uh, there's a texture in here that you're wanna, gonna want to get, as you can read them here, alpha and depth, and then diffuse normal, all that. Now, the gradient texture is located in the common textures folder. That's where everything except normal, or sorry, that's where everything except alpha and diffuses for Steve. This varies between characters. Some characters have all of their textures in their folder. Some have none of them in their folder. It's why we use this M menu here to get these textures. So I'm going to go right here and I'm going to get Steve's two. Just show them where they are. I'm going to plug the BC into A on the multiply node. Actually, I messed up there. Uh, there should actually be another multiply node plugged into A here. So, my mistake, just move these two from where I said. So, you want a mix, a mix color nodes to multiply two of them. The one hooked into base color should be set to one on factor. And on the second one, the factor should be hooked into a value node. I default it to 0.5 as it changes. And then an invert color. Alright. From here, we're going to take... Oops. Uh, I'm actually going to go grab this node set up here from Sniper's for use. It's just the normal map. Any time a normal map is used in any Dead by Daylight stuff, it needs to be set up just like this. The normal map, non color, arch recurves, inverted green, normal map, into normal. It's static, it never changes. Now we're also going to grab the M texture. Which is M is once again alpha, so plug it into alpha. Blend mode, alpha hashed on both looks fine to me, but you can experiment and use clip or maybe even blend, but I think personally, uh, hash looks fine, and if you're using cycles, it doesn't matter at all. But I need to change this texture to be the right one, which isn't located here. It's located in campers, common ACC, textures, top, and then the hair. Which one is being used? In this instance is, as this menu will tell us again, normal 03 underscore n. So, right there. Hit open. Oh, is it not in color that time? And we're good to go on that. Now, from here, we actually want to get the gradient texture. Once again, check in here. And gradient is root tip mask. So, that is located once again here as most textures are, or most hair textures if they're not in the characters folder. And we're gonna plug, set that to non-color and plug it into the factor node on the color ramp. Now we can pick our colors, so black should be the root, we can set it to whatever color we want, and the tip to something else. If, once again, we'll use U model, we can check root color and tip color. 
Now, I'm going to go to the other screen so I can view them. I'm going to select the root, go to RGB, and as they read is a string of numbers, and then a space, and then a string of numbers, space, and then another. And then there'll be a 1 at the end. That 1 doesn't matter. Ignore it. It's the alpha. You should never change it. So, for Steve, it's 0 0.067708 on red. Hit tab. You can go to the next color, and then once again, just copy all the values given. And we'll switch over to the tip. Once again, I'm just going to copy it again. 0 0.270833. Alright, now, this is where the value comes into play. So, 0, oh, sent to 0 means it's not going to use the BC at all, and only rely on this value down here. Uh, I actually typoed the green, so it should be uh, 0.13. 6248, not O, so it's a lighter brown. And using 1 on this node is only using the BC. In Steve's case, it's set to 0.476191. Hit enter. So it's basically using a mixture of the two. Uh, that material setup, I'm a bit less confident about, and you might want to change it. But it looks like the character. You're not going to look at it and forget who it is. So. Uh, from here, you can set a value node up on specular and roughness, there's really no sense in it, but, you know, it's there. Alright. We have a couple more setups going on here that we need to address, such as emission. Steve doesn't have any emission, so I'm going to hide him. And we're going to go back to you model. Open it. Now, a character I know has emission. I can show this off. Let's go to slashers. K23 which is Trickster, and I think it's this outfit. Yes. So I'm just going to export this body as an example. Now, when you use this menu in the view, it might ask you where to export it. By default, it's just going to put the export folder where your model itself is. Uh, you should always have it set to Actor X PSK on Skeletal and Static Meshes in the texture format. I recommend TGA, but you can use PNG if you want to. And I'm going to tell it not to show this out log box again. Hit OK. It'll export it. Now in Blender, go back and re-import this. So characters slashers for killers. K23, models, bodies, and there he is. I'm gonna hide the armature. And we're gonna edit this material. Okay. So I'm gonna copy the same material setup used on Steve paste it in, but of course change the texture locations. Now you can see there's a bunch more textures in here. I'm going to quickly explain. BC is base color, BDE is blood, dirt, emissive. Blood is totally unused, dirt is always the same, it's blank for killer, and it's a, a static look for survivor. The green channel is actually the texture you to load Nemesis Infection or the Plague Infection. Uh, and then E is emissive. It's parts that glow. Underscore E textures are used with the emission texture to where they can specify different colors in different positions. Usually they just use a color code to specify the color, but in some instances they instead use an underscore E if they need to be multiple different colors across it. Uh, Trickster is one of these unique cases. HM is unique to uh, killer models. It's basically anything affected by the HM mask is completely invisible and hidden from the first person view camera. In other words, you won't really have a use for this in Blender or Unreal. This is only used in game. N is normal like with Survivor. OP is occasionally the underscore M texture. Once again, behavior just likes to rename stuff sometimes. You just gotta look and see what it looks like, or use the M on the material here, and we can see HM, E, B, D, E, 
So they didn't even load the texture in this instance, so why is it even in there? And then Orm is, once again, occ occlusion, roughness, metallic. So, I'm going to load the BC, keep it as sRGB. Orm, non-color, and then N, once again, non-color. Alright, now, there's some slight differences in the material setup here. When you're loading emissions. So I'm going to move these on out of the way as they're not going to be used right now. And I'm going to bring in a math node, a vector math node specifically. Place it and set it to multiply. Plug that into emissions color output. I'm going to de uh, default set the strength to 5 because behavior tends to do that. Now the values here, we're going to go and check this. Uh, missive touch multiplier is it's a 0.5. This is a kind of weird thing behavior does. So this is basically just going to give it half strength off the start. I don't know why they don't just lower the strength. I'm sure it's in the do with their materials. But, of course, we're just going to mimic it because if it works, it works. Actually, my mistake. I read the... No, never mind. Uh... Okay, so from here, we're going to take a mix color node, place it, and we're going to set it to multiply, and the factor to 1, plug it into the top vector. The bottom one's always going to be a static number that corresponds to the emissive touch multiplier. This usually is just 2, sometimes they change it, so remember to always check it. From there... We are going to actually import the texture, so I'm on my other screen, I'm going to Trickster's folder, and we're going to bring in the BDE texture. Now, this is actually going to plug into a separate color, and the blue channel is going to plug into the uh, channel A of the multiply. Nothing can be seen here, or actually it can. You can see where the texture affects on its pants here. So I can set this to any color, and it would load it. But, before that, we need to actually do some other stuff. So, first up is I'm going to copy this multiply node and paste it. And I'm set it to screen. Wherever that is. No, sorry. I'm going to set it to overlay. And plug it into B. Now from here, I'm going to import another texture. I'm going to show where it's at. So it'll be characters, campers, textures, e-touch tile. Place that in here. All right, and I'm going to take it, and it's going to be plugged directly into B. Now, oops, I'm going to pull in a mapping node, place it, connect it into vector, and I'm going to get a texture coordinate node. And I'm going to take where it says UV, plug it into the top vector here, and plug it in there. Now I'm going to set the scale to 3 on X and Z, or X and Y. You'll see this is affecting where the emission is on the model. This is a generic texture that behavior uses quite often. Okay, from here, we're actually going to set it to A. And I mentioned Trickster is unique, so normally we would bring in a mix color notes to multiply to mimic a value in here that is emissive touch and uh, emissive color. In Trickster's case, and any case where they have an underscore E texture, uh, emissive touch is just set to white, and emissive color isn't used at all. So instead here, we're going to just take his E texture and import it. Once the e-texture is imported, plug it into B. Now, you might notice there's a bit of an ugly streak going on here. That doesn't look right, and we need to fix it. So, I'm actually just going to fully cut out the overlay node and the e-touch tile. And take the under E and plug it straight into B. This is where that should be. Now, once it's loaded, we should be done there. Okay, so 
I do still need to import his OP texture and plug it into alpha. Now in this instance, oh, huh, uh, give me one second to check that one. Uh, this is a unique problem. For some reason, Trickster's opacity texture is actually inverted. So, if you ever plug in an alpha texture and it just makes everything that's supposed to be visible invisible and everything that's not is the thing that is visible, just take an invert color and plug it in there. And the problem is solved. Uh, I've never seen that issue. So, uh, forgive that error. But from there, you now know how a general emission setup should be done. Uh, legacy is done slightly differently using the E-Touch uh, texture, all that, but I can show that more in depth in a moment, or in another video. So I'm going to de delete Trixer's stuff. Now from here, I'm going to go back to my desktop and I'm going to make a folder that's called FBX Export. So I'm going to take Steve. Select everything I want to export, go to export, and then FBX. From here, I'm going to return to my desktop, the folder I just created, and we're going to go armature. We're going to remove add leaf bones. I'm not going to bake animations. I won't be exporting any animations. If you plan to export animations to FBX, you need that enabled. So from here, I'm going to use... All this should be sick. Oh, selected objects. This way, only things you have selected in Blender will be exported. And I'm just going to call it Steve.fbx and hit export. And now, you will have to download the Epic Games launcher in order to download the Unreal Engine. I'm not going to give an in depth guide on doing that, as there's no sense in doing it. Uh, it's just basically run the launcher, and there's a tab for Unreal. The launcher, the link to launcher download will be in the description. Bring Unreal Engine, and then another library. There's probably not going to be anything here. If there is, uh, you should be able to edit it. But engine versions, hit the plus. If there's nothing there, you'll get Unreal 5.2.1. This is wrong. Click it, and I would have it installed. So it's not in the list. 4.27.2 is what. Uh, that by dialogue uses, you can use any version. I would recommend 5 as it's just better looking. It's more up to date, but I will be providing some materials to mimic Dead by Daylight's properties in the description. They're built for Unreal 4.27. So I'm going to launch this build. Once it's inserted, you may see something similar to this. You might have some other like default stuff. I when I installed Unreal, I didn't include the default content but anyway you want a blank project hit next there will likely be other stuff here but i choose blank next and these settings are up to you again i said i didn't i don't have starter content you can import it as it just comes with some basic stuff desktop trust console maximum quality blueprint and ray tracing is your choice if you're doing renders in unreal 4 I highly recommend it just makes things look better, but it slows render time. I'm going to be disabled with just default settings. I'm going to call it Dead by Daylight Models Guide. Oh, more than 20 characters. Uh, Dead by Daylight Guide. You can call the project whatever you want. And then create. I'm going to import Steve. So I'm going to open that folder on my desktop. Go to F FBX Export. I'm just going to drag Steve in and place him. Now you'll see some settings. You're going to want to hit the drop down arrow under mesh, compute normals, import normals, and tag tangents. Creating physics asset is up to you. If your character is going to have physics, leave this ticked. If they're not, you can disable it. It doesn't matter if you leave it on and you're not going to use them, it won't change anything. I'm going to leave it enabled because Steve does actually have physics. I have import animations disabled because once again, I'm not importing animations right now. But if you are, enable it. Scroll uh, under material, search location, set it to all, and material import method. I would strongly not recommend 
create new materials, that's going to create a new main material for every single material on the model. I prefer do not create and disable the import textures. These can stay how they are. Now, click import all. See if we'll import. You might get this error, you might not. It doesn't seem to matter. I've never noticed a difference. And Steve is here. He's imported rather small, actually. Uh, so I'd recommend scaling him up before exporting him. Which I'm actually going to go re-export him to fix this error, because it's, it's more difficult to work with. Uh, export. So I'm just going to export him as scale of 10. And click export. Now once I've exported again, I have to go into here and just right click him and re-import. There you go. He's the right size now. The skeleton is also re-imported correctly. And the physics asset. The physics asset, uh, I might make another video showing how to work with it. It's something you, you know, it's a whole other video. Right now it doesn't show the basic character. You're going to notice he has a bunch of element zero, like arrow element numbers. You can hit isolate, that's his eyelashes. These are just each of his materials. So head, all these. For now, we're going to ignore this because we need to make material. We're going to make a folder here and call it material. And inside of that, I'm going to right click, by the way, that's what I'm doing here. And go to material, and we're going to call it dvd underscore base. Enter that, and now we're on this uh, setup here. This is somewhat similar to the way Blender does it, but things are slightly different. So, to import a texture, you right click and you go Texture sam Sample Parameter 2D. And then I'm going to call this underscore BC because that's the texture. Plug the RPG into base color. You're going to notice this generic texture here. That's just the generic Unreal Engine 4. We don't actually have to set a texture here. We can just use the generic default one because of the way materials work in Unreal 4. Now that BC is plugged in, we're going to recreate once again. I'm just going to copy paste it instead of having to type it all again. When you copy paste, you'll notice you're going to have the same name. Make sure you change the name before anything else. So this will be underscore Orm. Now, once again, Orm is occlusion with metallic, so R into ambient occlusion. G into roughness, and B into metallic. Now, speckler is actually being used here, so I'm going to drag it, click, type in a constant node, and then right click that and convert to parameter. So we call this spec. Place it in there. The default value is 0.5. So, place that there. You can set the sliders max, minimum and maximum, so 0 and 1 by default. Now, we're going to make another texture parameter. Once again, change it to underscore in. Take the RGB output and plug it into normal. Now, there's our basic material. Uh, of course, I will show how to do emission and things like that, like I do. So, click apply here. And now, we can close that. I'm going to right click it and create material instance. I'm going to give this the same name as Steve, so mi underscore torso, or sorry, qm torso 008. That is Steve's jacket. Now, opening it, you'll see the preview of the model, and it has each of these. So I'm going to enable spec. Oops, did not mean to open Blender. We're going to go back. And we're going to pull up Steve's jacket. Alright, he's using 0.5, so I don't actually need to enable that. So if you don't enable a parameter, it's going to use a default from that material. So we're going to open up B, N, and ORM. First, I'm now going to make a folder called Steve Textures. You cannot use spaces, use underscores, or just do what I've done there. Now, I'm going to go back to U-Model, U-Model Export Game Characters Campers. Uh, Steve's folder, textures, 8, and I'm going to take his jacket. I'm going to place that in there. 
it'll tell you texture underscore and was imported to the normal map. Click OK. And now you can see the textures. We can go back to here. The VC. Now there's going to be a bunch of default textures in here. These are in the engine. You can click the little guy here. Or sorry. Click View Options. And Engine Content. Now all the stuff you can import will be shown. Just go through and select each of these. And you'll notice it's still slightly off. That's because one thing I did wrong in the DPD base here is you need to be mindful of this. Certain textures need to be ran, uh, loaded in specific ways. So by in, it needs to use normal as its sampler type. So we're going to go back and to show engine content, and I'm going to type in normal base flatten normal map. Click it, and that's fixed. Hit apply again, and see's looking better now. So from here, you're going to want to do that for each, make another material instance like this for each of the uh, main materials. I'm just going to do the one to show, and I'll do the ones that are unique. So go back to Steve, and we're going to isolate elements until we find his jacket, which is here. So where it says none, we're going to click, we're going to unshow engine content, and we now have our material and material instance. Select in the instance, it'll load, and there he is. Loaded as he should. Now, we're going to have to recreate the other materials and other parts. Alright, from last time, I finished making the last of the materials, except the hair and lashes, because those two require a new material. Uh, making these is easy. Once you make the first one, you can just copy, paste, rename it, open it up, change the texture, spec or value. Alright, so we're going to make the hair now. We're going to call this dvd underscore hair underscore base. Open it. And then under blend mode, we're going to set it to mast. And then we're going to find oh, wait, two sided, also it's enabled. Type in dither, do the search, and then dither opacity mask. Enable that. Hit apply. You can clear the search now. Okay. Now to make the actual node, or the actual material I made. So, as usual, texture, sam uh, texture sample parameter, unsure BC. I'm going to duplicate and paste it, and just do, you know, unsure M. And unsure N. I'm going to hook N into normal. M into opacity mass, and we're gonna set these to their proper defaults. So engine content flat normal, opacity mask we're gonna set to just white square. Enable that. I don't think I don't think there's a difference between the two, but yeah, that's what it does. And we're gonna hook BC into actually. We're going to take a LARP node, Linear Interpolate under Math, hook that into base color, and hook BC into the B value. Now we want a constant. I'm going to set it to 0.5, and then we're going to name it, we're going to convert it to a parameter and call it Diffuse Mix. Hook that into the alpha input. Now we want an add node. The add nodes output will go into A, and we're going to want the BC into the add nodes A. So, just like this. Now we're going to need a vector parameter. We're going to call this root color, if I can capitalize correctly. We're going to copy paste and tip color. Alright, we're going to take another Learn interpolate node and root into A, tip into B. We're going to take another texture sample, sample parameter. We're going to tell all this one root tip mask. And its RGB value will go into alpha of this LARP node. This will then hook into the adds B value. Uh, I'm going to actually set the texture to use Steve's just for a visual. So, show your content, type in hair. 
and Steve's BC texture. Now this won't show right now, but the diffuse mix set to 1 is only reading color from the BC, and set to 0 is only reading color from root and tip color. So the root tip mask is your gradient texture. So we're going to go in here and type in gradient. It's in there. Now you might see it's set to sampler type of linear color. Uh, that may, that won't do that by default, so it's something you need to do. When you import any of your textures, uh, any texture that's grayscaled, like M textures, height, gradient, and also any texture that says ORM. So all of your ORM textures need to go and real click select them using control you can select multiple then right click one of them asset actions and bulk edit via property matrix when you open this under texture you'll see srgb now this weird checkered pattern through it means some of these are already set to not use srgb and some aren't but all of these textures need it disabled uh, Disabling this sRGB here is the same exact thing as setting the texture to non-color in Blender. So after doing that, we're just going to hit Control s to save them. And now we can continue whatever we're doing. This is actually... Oh, wait, hold on. Specular needs a constant converted to a parameter, and we're just going to call it spec. And then we can duplicate that and make one called rough. And took rough into roughness. Uh, by default, I'd say just use 0.75 and 0.2, and you can save. All right, that's your hair texture or hair material completed. Now, one thing, because I set the ORM textures to use, uh, not use sRGB after making the material, I do need to go back to the base DVD material, and you'll see the ORM texture is using sample type color so if you just set it to any orm texture it'll change it and the problem is solved so we can hit save and apply that now and we're going to go ahead and open up steve to show you can see he doesn't look as wet anymore except for where he should if we go back to blender we can do the same thing you'll see it looks right only where the mud is it looks wet srgb oops wrong material yeah, that looks more like what he looked like in Unreal before we made that change. So, always non-color and disable sRGB for ORM textures. Very important. Alright, for his hair, however, we're going to go back into the material, right-click the DVD into your hair into your base, and create material instance. And I'm going to call it... I'm actually going to go into Blender and copy the material. Something of note. If you make your material instances uh, before you import your character, so if I had all of these right here just like this, and then I imported Steve's model, he would come pre-baked with the materials pre-assigned. So, rule of thumb is to do that genuinely, unless you just, you know, don't want to. But then you have to manually assign the stuff. I do need to come in here and change his M, N, and uh, root tip is fine. You can set the root and tip colors though. We're gonna enable BC. Spec rough and diffuse mix. Rough is supposed to be one. Spec is zero. Normal. We're gonna type in hair again. Grab that. And then M. Use his M. Alright. Uh, you'll see warning. Uh, M is using as color. Why is it doing that? Well, if you come in here, the texture I use by default isn't uh, linear color. If I set it to linear color here, we're going to get this error. So, I'm actually going to go ahead and just set the default texture to one that's already set like that. I would recommend importing like a blank yellow or white or black and set them to non-color so you don't have to pre-bake an ORM or whatever into the material, but it doesn't really change anything. And we're going to hit apply. No, that warning is gone. Alright, so we're going to, I'm just going to use the values from uh, Blender. Since they're already set right, no reason. They're the exact same. In Blender, if you go to the hex value when you're copying, I should show that on screen. 
So click, set to hex, and you can just copy that. And then in here, root hex sRGB, select all, and paste it. You'll notice two extra Fs will appear at the end. That corresponds to the alpha. There's not really a difference here. It's barely used, so just leave it as FF and hit OK. Now we're going to copy the tip. And paste it on in there. And there we go. And now one more value. We need to copy his diffuse mix and paste it. All right, there's Steve's hair as it should appear. I'm going to enable that in case I change it later. Save. And Steve's hair looks right now. One more thing that needs done is his eyelashes. So I'm going to isolate them because you can see they're there but not material. They're also using the hair material here. So I'm just going to minimize it. Go back. Right click. And I'm going to call it MI underscore lashes 00. Open it up. I'm gonna set the diffuse mix. I'm gonna set roughness spec to zero, roughness to one, diffuse mix to one. This means that the root tip mask, root color, and tip color aren't used. I want flat normal to be like that, and the BC is just gonna be black, and the M texture is gonna be the lashes M. All right, we can save that, and now over here. Can assign the texture, and there we are. Can't be seen with the glasses, but if you zoom in, get behind the glasses, they're there. Alright, so Steve is ready to go from here. For all intents and purposes, the material is ready. But, I need to show off how to do emission now. I showed that on Trickster and Blender previous, but from here, we're just going to boot up the material. And also the Unsure M texture. Uh, I've already done it here, off screen, but once again, it's the same thing, just blend mode, mast, there it is. And we'll just copy a texture parameter, and underscore M, plug it into opacity mask. Here I have a white square. Uh, I was hoping there would be a texture that defaults to... Uh, linear color, but again, same rules apply, just solid white, so there isn't one by default. And I've already changed the arm texture here. Uh, Alright, so it's time to import, or to set up the emission nodes. So, we're going to want another texture sample. Unsure, blood dirt emissive. We're going to plug its, uh, its RGB input into a desaturate node and then from there we're gonna hook it into an overlay node blend overlay as the base then we're gonna want two vector samples and we're gonna call it emissive color and the second one will be touch These two are going to just be plugged into a normal multiply node. Oops. And then that multiply will go into the blend value of the overlay. We'll bring this on down. And now, actually, the BD should be under that. Uh, that's a mess up. That should be here. We want another texture, once we call the emissive tile texture. That is the actual name that Dead by Daylight uses, so that needs to go into desaturate. And it is the T touch, or sorry, E touch texture. There it is. Now, we're going to want to take the B channel of BDE into a multiply node, and the result of blend overlay into B, and then from that into another multiply node. If I could spell right, and then we want another constant, convert to parameter, and emissive power. And that will go into B, 
and then multiply will go into emissive color. By default, it's set to zero, so it's not going to do anything no matter what. So we can go set the color or the texture for the BDE to tricksters as a preview, and then we'll set emissive power to five. You can start to see it appear. Now, the specific texture is expecting the emissive tile texture to give a color instead of using these two. I'd recommend setting these by default to just solid white. So just set it to white and it's there. Now for actually coloring it, emissive color will, you know, just solid color, pick your color. Emissive touch will just seems to slant, it can be like the accent color, so we got it pink, so I'll make it, or reddish pink, so I'll make it actual pink, and they mix. I don't really know why behavior does this, it, it makes like a legacy look better, but in this instance, emissive color and touch aren't even used for this trickster, uh, texture. So we're actually going to move these back, take the desaturate back, and we're going to bring in a static switch parameter. I'm going to call it use emissive tile color. Now, we're just going to take the RGB for emissive tile texture into true and the blend overlay output into false. And then its output will go into where blend overlay was. Nothing has changed here because by default this switch is set to false. In your material instance, you can enable it. And if you do, there you are. It's only reading the color from the emissive tile texture. So, turn off engine content and we'll type in underscore E for tricksters, and there we are. Now, if this is disabled and you do that, it's just going to be, you know, reading these colors. So, we're going to set these back to just white. I actually believe in Behaviors version, emissive touch is still used when using the color from this tile texture, but every time it is, it's just set to solid white, which means it's not doing anything anyway. So, this is just the way that I have it set up. And you're really good to go from here. So, by default, you'll want your BDE to just be solid black, so it's not doing anything, and you're gonna want your emissive power by default set to zero. You can set the slider max to 10 or whatever. And the emissive tile texture should be using E Touch. All right, and that's a mission ready to be set up. I'm going to set these all back to default values and show the material in the editor. So what we're going to do is once again in Steve stuff, you can just open it and you can see the stuff's all there, but it's not being used, so it's not doing anything. So I'll make a new material instance and we'll call it just. Yeah, my answer trickster test. And enable everything. Missive power will be five. Spec where we'll keep on that. Use that one. And we're gonna type in K23 since it's, that's his ID. Enable the BDE. The OP. Which I still haven't figured out this yes, I have. I think I just thought about it. They use the same texture in different materials, so that's fine. Uh, then the N, ORM, and E. And there we are. Tricks material all set up. Now, there actually is something else I want to add to it. Uh, this is used by the game and is a general quality of life. You're going to take a panner node, plug that into the UV of emissive tile texture. Then we want a texture coordinate, and we'll take that, plug it into a multiply, and then we're going to take another constant parameter, and we're going to call it emissive tile. Plug that into B. By default, this should be set to 3. That's what behavior has there set to. I'm going to set it the Schleier to 10, so that's just a nice value to use. We'll take the multiply and hook it into the coordinate node of the panner. And then we're going to take a make float to node. Put its result into speed. And then we're going to want, oops, 
two more constants or constant parameters. I'm gonna call it speed x, and the bottom one will be speed y. Defaults on these should be zero, and I'm gonna set the the slider to a maximum of one, and x into x and y into y. Okay, that might not have seemed like it did anything, but it's useful to make the emission actually move. So we're gonna open Trickster's test again, and I'm gonna go ahead and set it back to use not use the color, and then we're gonna default this texture back. So there it is. Now, if we go to speed x and set it to let's say 0.2. Oops, I need to set show, or sorry, this arrow, real time. And now, you can see the texture moves. Behavior does uh, use this exact technique for Trickster's knives, the, how the gradient moves and all that. And set that back. And we can set the MS of tile to 5, and you can just see the texture gets bigger or smaller, depending on the value. So, we'll default that. Re-enable the color. And this can actually be used to make a mission look a bit better by having the embers like move with it. It's just a neat trick. That is something they do actually use, so the node setup is here. Alright, and with that, you should be good to go with importing characters. Uh, I will actually include these two materials in the description, but I'm going to be... Uh, I will, again, I need to emphasize, making your own materials is the better move. These are very, very, very basic materials, basically for previewing. It's so you can understand how the textures function. 